with Speed Laughs, the comedy podcast for people with short attention spans who don't know how to, um... Poyle? Hey, Poyle? Yeah, what do you want? Will you get me the extra blanket? Oh, all right. Turn over on your left side, and I'll get it for you. Me? Why don't you turn over on your left side? You're on top of me. You're the one who's got to turn over. Oh, yeah. I guess I wasn't thinking. Now, there's a surprise. If you'd started thinking, we wouldn't be in this hospital. I told you doing a Siamese Twins Act would never go over. Well, Danny said all the comedy teams was doing Siamese Twin Acts these days. Morton and McGuire did one in Kankakee, and the audience loved it. Morton and McGuire. You were listening to those bums again? Listen, Ruby. The last time Morton or McGuire had a good idea was when they enlisted in the Civil War. Excuse me, ladies, but did I hear you mention the Civil War? You know I happen to be something of an authority on that subject. You stay out of this, mister. It ain't your turn to come on yet. Oh, I beg your pardon. Just trying to be helpful. Anyway, how could Morton and McGuire have been in the Civil War? Wouldn't that make them about a hundred years old? It was a joke, Ruby. Yeesh. You'd think we'd been in the business long enough that you ought to know a joke when you hear one. Well, I sat through your solo spot in Grand Rapids last week, and I didn't hear no jokes. Yeah, neither did the audience. What audience? It was five cockroaches in the janitor. That makes six cockroaches. I never did like that fella. How long have we been in this hospital anyway? I don't know. Ever since we did the Siamese Twins bit, my watch has been in your pocket. I can't get at it. Of all the crazy ideas you ever came up with. You know, Ruby, we was just supposed to pretend to be Siamese Twins. You wasn't supposed to actually stick us together. Now we're stuck like this, and we had to tell Danny to cancel all our bookings until we get out of here. Well, I didn't think the glue would hold this long. I told you we ought to have used a stapler. Well... We come from 1928. Staplers wasn't invented yet. Yes, they was. Google says staplers was invented in 1866. Well, they didn't have Google in 1928, so how could I have known that? That's why I used glue. Morton and McGuire, of all the lame-brained, fat-headed, no-good... Kyle, will you knock it off? All I asked you for was the extra blanket. This bed is cold. I told you, you got to turn over so I can reach it. Oh, yeah, okay. Can you, can you reach it now, Poyle? I think so. Just move over a little closer to the edge of the bed. Just a little more. Okay, I, I think I can almost... Ah! Ow, that hurts. Ruby, I told you to go on a diet. You know how it feels to have 200 pounds fall on top of you? Two hundred pounds? How dare you? I don't weigh two hundred pounds. Oh, gee, kid, I'm sorry. You're right. More like two fifty. Two fifty? I ought to punch you right in the head if I could reach it. Why don't you punch your own head? You won't feel nothing. Hey, will you girls be quiet? I'm trying to get some sleep over here. Ah, go peddle your papers, you screwy dame. Who asked you to butt in? The listener's at home. They've been waiting for me to come on. This isn't your show, you know. Yes, and I've been wanting to say a few words myself about... I told you before, mister. Keep out of this. Yeah, this is a family argument. Now, see here, ladies. I'm just here to deliver some food. I hope you're delivering a custard pie. I'd like to throw it right in that ugly mug of yours. Well, I'll thank you to have a little more respect for someone who used to be the President of the United States. You? President of the United States? Yes, I was. Oh, sure. And I'm Jennifer Lawrence. Only I come from 1928, so I don't know who that is yet. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Lawrence. But please keep quiet. You're disturbing the other patients. I don't know. Most of them already look pretty disturbed to me. That ain't funny, Ruby. It ain't? I heard Morton and McGuire use that joke in Altoona last year in the audience. You and your Morton and McGuire. Why don't you just marry Morton and McGuire? What? Both of them? You think they would? I think that ain't legal. Ruby. Maybe it ain't a bad idea. 
That Morton's awfully good looking, you know. Sure, he is. But McGuire's got more personality. You know, Morton, he don't talk much. Maybe that's because he got all his teeth knocked out in that fight he had with Joe Cook. But for a fella that ain't got no teeth, I still think he's good looking. From the chin down, anyway. But McGuire makes more dough than Morton, so maybe I ought to marry him. You know, McGuire's got that dry cleaning business when he ain't doing the act with Morton. Funny sort of a dry cleaning business. He told me he runs it with this fella named Al Capone. I never met him, though. I wonder what kind of an act he does. I'll have to ask Eddie Cantor the next time I see him. Maybe he knows. You remember Cantor. He's that Jewish fella with the big eyes. Last time I saw him was in, hmm, let's see, I think it was 1926. Yeah, yeah, that's it. At the Capitol Theater. I don't remember which one. Maybe it was that time that he and I... Will Ruby ever stop talking? Will Ruby and Pearl ever get unstuck, or will they be conjoined twins for the rest of their lives? Will Ruby ever get the extra blankets she wanted? Will she and Pearl ever get up off the floor? Does Ruby really weigh 250 pounds? Will Mr. Lincoln ever get a chance to say anything? Is he in fact delivering a custard pie, and will Pearl throw it in his face? And if she does, will that be funny on radio where you can't even see it? Will we ever find out why Rose is in the hospital? If Ruby and Pearl come from 1928, how does Pearl know what Google is but doesn't know who Jennifer Lawrence is? Will Nathaniel Clute ever find a store that sells shoes his size? Will this show ever make any sense? Tune into the next episode of Speed Laughs and find out. That was the first episode in the fourth series of Speed Laughs, a short podcast for short people with short attention spans, written by Andrew Gilmore and featuring Martha Michael with Dick Lee, Joe McCann, and Andrew Gilmore. We hope you enjoyed it, and if you didn't, who cares?